Yeah, I just wanted to, want to uh, advise everyone that um, my boards are really dangerous and they're really sharp and serrated. They're hot coated with uh, scalding hot lava coats they do. So it's like in the wrong temperature or left out in the sun for a certain amount of time, they, that could liquefy and actually burn your feet to the bones and you'll have no more feet. So they're dangerous and highly addictive and you know, they're a lot of fun though. So you know, come by and order one. Costa Mesa at Golden State Glassing. Um, my friend Jay and Brian work here and uh, kind enough to let me use their room. And uh, yeah, we're gonna make some boards and hopefully they come out all right and we'll go to uh, take a long plane ride, see if they work. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, me and Al have known each other for many years now. And um, I love Al, he's one of my best buds and uh, I think his boards are not super, the most forgiving boards, you know? So the fact that he can put those things on a rail and gouge them is pretty impressive. Like, it's, a, it's amazing, actually. I don't know, you see a lot of people that will get their, get the bonzer that he has and try to surf it and they kind of look like they uh, got too drunk the night before or something. <laughs> can't, really, can't really do it the way he does. I've been really excited and inspired by the Camel Brothers, probably for like, I don't know. But it's been a while, eight years, something like that. Um, and working with them on boards. And coming from riding single fins and maybe dealing with some of the, the drawbacks of riding them in good surf, the Bonzo kind of helps correct some of like uh, the spills. And hanging out with a lot of shortboarders, you know, the high performance shortboarders. A lot of my friends are really radical in their approach. So it kind of helps to uh, maybe be able to be inspired by the way they're surfing a little, a little bit more by having the insurance policy and the extra projection that a bonds are and a, the bottom contour kind of allows you to ride away. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty dangerous. It's pretty, yeah. It's, it's pretty dope. That's what's nice about being a surfer and then getting into shaping is you've written so many boards and you've felt so many boards that when you're creating it, it's um, something that's satisfying. I feel like a lot of the surfer shapers I know, it's not it's not a competition to see who's the best, it's just sort of a gratifying, um, self-gratifying, self natural thing to do. Um, yeah, so when I got back from uh, our hand-shaped surfer mag trip up north, I got home and decided to turn Slobcraft and do a real thing and it's actually what I call, first called my boards when I first started shaping like 10 years ago so yeah that was the first name originally which is pretty cool and it kind of drifted away from me but then I decided to bring it back. Yeah it's just been making millions ever since. I'll probably make a good way sort of a board that's an inch bigger than my normal short board about a 5.9. I'll leave the tail square and open to do with whatever I want with when I get to that point in, in the shape. Yeah, it'll be pointy and uh, my boards are really sharp, razor sharp and dangerous, so I'm gonna make it extremely dangerous today. The glass is, the glass are just stuck on Well, that's sick, that's what I'm doing right there. Squid tail, that's crazy, it's like a flame fire tail. I've known Andrew probably since he was three, which sounds crazy, <laughs> but um, I think he must have been like five when he started surfing, so maybe five. Uh, I think anytime somebody that can surf as good as Andrew can and they're able to create their own their own tool, you know, uh, 
it always comes out pretty impressive. Uh, no, no one can really understand how a board works unless they can actually surf them that way, you know? In that sense, there's a, a huge amount of respect for what he makes, how he makes it, and what he's trying to create to, to surf a certain way. Same thing goes, you know, for all, all the surfer shapers that uh, are, are really, really impressive, you know? We're down at Sharma Button Shores, um, five acre board building compound slash the house he grew up in. Uh, we've just been Sharma's, uh, Sharma's a board builder by trade, start to finish. Um, meticulous craftsman, well beyond his years. And uh, he's just been, he's been showing me the ropes basically. There's probably not a s particular design that I'm really excited about at the moment. It's kind of the whole thing. Which is refreshing, it's kind of liberating when you're not pigeonholed into one zone. I actually set out to make a 2 plus 1. I was dead set on that for the last month, that I was going to make that and take it to HTs. And then I rode my little 5820, like a twill thing, um, yesterday. And Alice was like, dude, just shape a longer version of that. And I'm like, alright, and then last minute. So I made like a 5.11 kind of semi-step up performance 20. All yeah. that stuff would go against Simon's mentality though. Of, it should only be there if it needs to be there. Are you gonna put concave in? Yeah. Yeah. Heavy, yeah. <laughs> attempt to make a bit of a copy of this board today. I've been liking it. Remake make it. Now this big lump. <laughs> She's in there somewhere. Just gotta like get her out. You're in there somewhere. Gonna find you. Get in there some. When you're shaping it's like if you can like almost black out while you're doing the process and you're not thinking about the process, it's just sort of coming out, the board will always be great. But if you're thinking about every stage or every step or trying to fight a bump, it's just a nightmare. Yeah, it's 6'2", it's 19 and a half, single fin, edge bottom. This design's something I've been working on for like, I've been tightening up shapes and it's just sort of the evolution of pretty much every board I've worked on the last five years. It is releasing water off your board earlier. Combined with some of the stuff we've been working on with the fins, it feels like a faster ride to me. I actually feel like I'm going the fastest I've ever been. Whether that's just like in my head or I've coached myself into thinking that, but I do feel like I'm going the fastest I've ever been, so that's probably the feeling. Yeah, so we'd like, I mean, it's pretty down to the wire. We're leaving in probably 48 hours. The boards are still, the filler's still going off. It's pretty cold here, so it's like slowing the process a little bit, but yeah, we'll probably sand them to the wee hours tonight and then and then the next day we fly out. So we were even looking at the report, you know, then like just before we shake the boards, like on the long range, can you just see a blob? Like, should you make a bigger board? Should we make a smaller board? Like, should we make something for small, small waves or whatever? And that like, the luxury of having that much control over your equipment, that's like what shaping's about and what surfing's about to me, for sure. I think it should be fun. Oh, yeah. Out of it, top secret. That fin's a lot. Everyone's got their different approach. The more I think about it, the worse my boards turn out. Yeah. <laughs> the more I measure things, the worse they turn out. I mean, you're riding water. Water's not that smart. It's almost like cooking egg. Everyone's got their own like little flavor they like. Totally. Everyone's got the same ingredients, but it's like how much you add. Yeah, I just pour as much salt on it as possible. <laughs> so 
But then I've seen so many people that are just like so happy just to buy the board and just be stoked with the actual just object and just have the best experience as well. So it's like whichever way you want to go with it. You're on the edge of a dream. <laughs> Hello and welcome. This is 6.2, edge bottom, originally a tri-fin, didn't work, went better as a single fin, snapped the single fin out, glassed it back in, still figuring it out. 6.8, uh, edge bottom, tri-fin, probably one of my favourites. Had it for a few months now, it's just a bit of a go-to. Feels magic, don't really know why. This one, 6'2", edge bottom, I made for the trip. A uh, little wide in the tail. Tried to copy and base it off this board, but uh, it's weird, like if you've been shaping and surfing your whole life, you like, you can take curves, you can mimic curves, but like your eye will see a good curve, you know? You've held that board under your arm for like your whole life, or you've seen curves in boards that you liked and like you just subconsciously and like through the osmosis of being around surfboard design you just pick up good curves and if you have the ability you'll naturally put it into a shape you won't put like a kinky curve in a board it'll just sort of well, that's how I figure out anyway like you'll get to a nice point where your brain's just like that's the curve that's the shape if you just kill yourself with the details and the increments it'll just kill the board as well Raise a sharp board, quiver, take two. Careful, cut yourself. So I showed up here and um, four out of four boards had, came asymmetrical tails. They all squished on one side. All those tails are fun. Just deal with it. I'd like to thank the airlines a lot for that. <laughs> but thank God we had Sharmar. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, Sharma. Thank God we had Sharma. The, the ding master and he curated all of them real nice for me really quick so I was able to serve him right away.
Five eight, 18 and three quarters. Five eight, 18. That's it. Uh, five eight and a half, 18 and a half. Um, five eight and three quarters, 18 and five eighths, two and a question mark, two and a question mark, two and a question mark, two and a question mark. Slice to there, slice to there, slice to there. Sliced there, sliced there. So yeah, it's just whatever you heard, whatever you've heard about the sharpness, it's it's true. So just don't drop in and beware if you're riding one. First one here is a uh, six one eight and a half, two and five sixteenths, and then this one here is the one I made uh, for the trip. It's like a five eleven twin fin with the Ryan Birch's like twill fins, kind of in between a keel twenty and a uh, upright. But yeah, this is the board I've been riding pretty much every day. And this one here is like a two plus one. It's six one, 19 and a quarter, two and three eighths. This has got like a single fin box with side bites. Um, did you dry dock at AK? There's a bit of a chip there.
Okay, so um, I made four boards for this trip. This is the board I shaped um, while you guys were there. Similar to quite a few boards I've written in the past. Uh, wide point forward, stereotypical 70s outline. Uh, bonds are enhanced, V off the tail. And the fins, you'll notice, are slightly more laid over than the others. Kind of to compensate for the tight tail. Helps loosen it up. So that's board number one. It's 7.3, probably about 18 and 3 quarters. Board number two, I've been riding this one lately. This is off of a Rush Short. Uh, Campbell Brothers. I've been kind of riding for a long time. Fins aren't as canted as the other ones, uh, meaning not as laid over. Thin tail. More of a dome deck, so water's con consistently sheeting off of it. This one's 6'8". This one is much like the last board, a little bit bigger. This is a seven foot board. A little harder rail, meaning not so much a sea rail. Probably works really good in mushy soft waves. This one is the alternative version, board number four of board number two. Just taken off a Bing Bonzer, so a little bit more curve up here, and a little straighter in the tail down here. A single concave. Feed off that 70s template. living in the great sprawling town of New York City. Well, I guess you know the story. Huge crowded place filled with lonely people who can't find each other. And so I wrote this song that we might come to find ourselves and finally come to find each other. You will see me walking through the fog. Looking blue for someone who will share my joy and pain. If I look a bit too closely, don't turn away. I'm just looking for someone. Thank you. 
to show your feelings too. You need someone to. Yeah, well, you know we are. You need someone to. Oh, you know that it's true. You need someone to. Oh, I need someone. I need someone. You, you, you need someone. Like can drop into their trip for a second too. Like it's like you can take a yeah. ride on their train, which is like might come out and you're surfing, and then you might like take that back into your own surfing. Like, Absolutely. Like a good conversation that can happen, or you can gain like crazy respect for like a really finely tuned, like beautiful board, or even just someone's like first attempt. It's like there's no real scale, but like you can have this weird conversation with someone just through your own surfing, which is like so sick. Like. I love riding Els Bonza this morning and just trying to like, you know, you've seen him that take those same lines and then you try and go do it. It's like, yeah. you know, it just sort of happens up top, but it feels really nice too. That was informative, thorough, fun. magazine trips we're talking about boards making boards for the trip um riders right, right, like right. yourself and, and my and the, right, you know, right. riding boards that we need shape so um, a lot of negative space in this well do you Why like do, do you like the, the bit of edge you put i just noticed there's a little bit of an edge on your sports on the rail do you like do you, well, you must like that because i mean i don't understand it but well, i saw you putting kind of that short boardy tuck edge on it and, i don't know i just kind of thought maybe it was a good thing <laughs> do you like it <laughs> Well, that's the thing with surfing, like with shaping and stuff too. It's so uh, there's no textbooks on it, or there's no like written law. It's not like you know, it's not like aerodynamics where they build a plane and they're like, you have to have the center of lift here, otherwise your plane's going to do a backflip and stall and fall out of the sky. You know? 
because everyone surfs so differently and the, the, everyone can make boards so differently. So there's like, there's still so many weird designs to be explored. It's just like how far can you think about it, you know? Yeah.